Awesome. Thanks for that, Heidi. Um, I bought, I don't know, four or five of those little cartoon books and actually handed them out to my entire family um, because this thing just runs through my family. And it's something that people, they're, they are afraid to talk about it. it. It's a very strange thing. And I think this sleep paralysis thing from the so-called science has done a lot of damage. Um, again, I, I don't want to just keep beating that in, but the, but the sleep paralysis thing has done so much damage to so many people. So if there's something that could have been done all of these years that is not getting done because we think it's just sleep paralysis, we're just inching closer to the grave um, where these things are going to follow us into the afterlife and be waiting for us at the end of that light. And uh, I, I mean, it's just so incredibly serious. We cannot have enough of these conversations. Um, you know, a lot of times we sit around in spaces all day talking about uh, people and, and drama and stuff, and this is the stuff that means something. You know, this is the stuff we have to talk about and, and get the word out. People accuse me especially and us in general, you know, of being doomers and spreading fear when we should be thinking about the love and light, but this is the stuff that can save people, and this is the stuff that's so important. So thanks again, Heidi. Um, we'll go to uh, QFO. What's your question for Heidi? I am just want to say that I've experienced it all my life and I know every single thing about it. And I used to be able to turn it on and induce it myself. So if you've got a question for me, I'll, I can tell you everything about it, really. Well, awesome. Thank you. What um, Have you ever been able to make it stop and how do you do that? I've never been able to make it stop, <clears throat> but it just goes off. It just goes off itself. I've I've been frozen. I've seen a dark cloaked figure. No facial features. No hands coming out of the cloak. Uh, the whooshing sound when you first go into it and you realise that you can't move. That's the first thing that happens to me when I first go into it. And then I realise I can't move. I know when it's coming. And when... I'm in that state, I can hear everything with a heightened awareness, like people walking about the bedroom, basically everything, and the, the furthest I've gone with it is seeing a flash of light, and that's it, and I've had it since, since I was born. Yeah, I'd be really interested um, to see if you uh, employed some of Heidi's um, tactics and blessing the house, etc., cetera, etc., cetera if that would be helpful for you, and maybe you could get back to us um, on that. I will say that I went for deliverance, um, what, two weeks ago, and in case anybody doesn't know what deliverance is, it's the Christian version of exorcism, basically. And I actually, even though I had been a Christian my whole life, I actually learned a lot during that couple of weeks. And one thing I was told is that it can be a process. And so these things, they think they own us. Um, I had some very uh, demonic, um, my family, my birth family, um, was actually involved with the lady and uh, the Nino, and these are old African gods, um, and they're, they probably, um, uh, that's probably where this was coming from for me, just to try to make it short, but they do think they own us, just like Heidi said, they, they will trick you into agreements if they can't own you outright. And so it can be just a process where you kind of have to go through these blessings and you might have to go through it for a bit, but eventually um, it should stop. So uh, QFO, if you ever decided to do that, please get back to us and let us know if it works for you. Um, NHI, I think you're next. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, some of this stuff makes me think of um, an interview I saw, this was a while ago, with Lou Elizondo, where he said when he was in the program, um, I think it was a general or um, someone that was, you know, overseeing him, asked him to stop investigating the phenomenon um, because, it, because it is demonic. And his response was, well, if they are demonic, then shouldn't we investigate them more? So I was wondering what Heidi's take on that is the, f the fact that he was ordered to stop investing, investigating it because of that reason. So I, I found that kind of disturbing myself. Yeah, that, there was a, 
it's becoming realized uh, among a lot of different researchers and, of course, those in D.C. and uh, anyone that's kind of connected to this phenomenon that a lot of negativity could come with it. I mean, look at the Las Vegas folks that reported the aliens in their backyard. The latest is uh, <laughs> they're having horrific poltergeist activity. They had a crucifix float into the middle of the room and turn upside down and then drop. I mean, so where these things kind of rip a hole in uh, other things come through that are, that's connected to them. And it's usually of a demonic nature. So um, it's, it's not surprising to me. Uh, there's a lot of fear when you talk about demons. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, government agencies have uh, a fun budget for... I want to talk about the King budget. Solomon was a huge... Um, Indigo, can you hear Heidi? Heidi is actually in the middle of talking. I'm not sure if you can hear her. If you can't hear Heidi, go ahead and drop down and we'll bring you right back up. It's just a glitch. Heidi, go ahead. Uh, I was talking about that there's there's a reason why there's a, a budget for film projects in you know, D.C. and the different offices. You know, they, they want to influence things a certain way. They want a, a certain uh, project created over uh, another one. And you wonder why, gee, why did, why did that horrible film get made? Or, gosh, I got something better than that. Well, hello. Um, <laughs> they're absolutely uh, trying to hear the conversation. Um and in our thought process, I mean, everything is is a is a deal. Um, but there, there's, there's, uh, you know, there's reasons why they have the fear that they do. What you know, I, I, I think uh, there's also we have to put into consideration the 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 wool's been pulled over our eyes for a super long time, and and there's been people in power in our governments that have been really enjoying themselves uh, with the technology that they've found and not shared it. You know, oh, somebody got cured of brain cancer. How'd that happen? Uh, you know, they've got all these these different uh, tricks, and and they don't have to, uh, you know, sit in the dark about. But if they were actually cl came clean about what they know, all of them would go to prison, wouldn't they? It's just kind of like the list from Epstein's Island. It, they'd all go to prison if it was revealed that they had this knowledge all this time. That's not national security. You guys have been having a ball with it. Um, you know, so it's, it's uh, I, you know, the things that they know and the things that they do. The, I know that our government knew about myself and my connections to things before I did. How do I know? Because I, I, was, I was abducted by the military and interrogated. What? Why would they do that? You know, I didn't have a book out. I belonged to a UFO group. Um, but then <laughs> I, I think I spoke about this in a, in a room with you prior fringe about my family being depicted on a very popular television series, my family by name and look talking about the end of the world. How's that? Um, it was a spinoff of the X-Files. It's called millennium. So the third and final season, <laughs> I, I think I, I might've spoke of this, uh, prior, but I'll say really quickly watching it with friends. I stepped away from the TV. And my friends start laughing. Heidi, there's a lady that looks just like you on here. I'm like, oh, come on. You know, I sit down and, oh my gosh, it was my doppelganger. I'm like, well, that's weird. And then they call her Agent Hollis. And I'll just never forget that moment where we all froze and looked at each other like, no way, no way. And then they introduced her sister, had my sister's nickname. And they introduced her father, had my father's first and last name, James Hollis. I'm like, what is going on? What is going on? If I wasn't the only black lady that was uh, doing what I was doing at the time, that might have been a coincidence, but no. Um, and it wasn't. And there's a lot more to that story. But go ahead, you can look that up. That show isn't streaming anywhere. Only get it on DVD, not Blu-ray either. Wonder why. Wonder why. But so they portrayed my family before I was getting into this stuff like this. What the heck? How's that possible? I did get answers about it. I got some, or speculated answers, uh, hopefully could speak to at some point on. But um, yeah, there's a lot of fear around these topics for a reason. 
Thank you, Heidi. Uh, doctors, welcome to the space. Go ahead. All right, thanks. So sorry for interrupting earlier. <laughs> I didn't realize that was this type of space. Um, but yeah, my bad. But Heidi, yeah, my God. Uh, that's it's very interesting and like I'm very interested in that and uh, your experience like and I'm not trying to like come off as like oh yeah you're full of shit no I'm actually like interested in it and uh, yeah that's all I wanted to say <laughs> I was like <laughs> I don't know uh, what else to say like I don't, I, I mean, dude, I'm a, I'm a dude, uh, I, I was born in Michigan, and I grew up in Iowa, I was in the army for four years, the only, uh, you know, uh, extra terrestrial thing I've experienced was, uh, I don't even know if it was anything, it was probably just a meteorite, but I was in, uh, the Mojave Desert in California, during one of our training exercises there and I seen <laughs> I was literally it was like right after we got done training and we're just relaxing and chilling and I'm in the back of my uh, tracked vehicle I'm a senior medic and I'm in a 113 okay and I'm just sitting in the back and I'm looking up at the stars and like I can see all the stars and I'm like I'm like, wow, I've never seen so many stars in my life because I've been surrounded by city lights all my night, all my life. But anyways, I'm looking up and I see, I seen, I see something streak across the, sh across the sky and I'm like, oh, wow. And then I see another thing literally right behind it. Like it was in formation. And I was like, whoa, what the fuck? And like I, and I, I, the guy next to me, I was like, "Hey, do you see that?" And he wasn't even looking. And he's like, "No, what?" I'm like, "Dude, I just seen something like a meteorite and another meteorite pass right behind it, like it was in formation." And he's like, "Yeah, right." And he's like, "Yo, what are the fuck you talking about?" But I mean, that's literally all I had. I mean, I've had some weird ass dreams. I mean, but. I mean, that, I don't, that doesn't mean anything, but that's the only, like, legit, like, like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> sober, wide eye fucking thing I've had, but that's, and that was in the middle of Mojave, but other than that, yeah, I, in the military, that's all I've had, so, but I've, I was only in the military for four years, and I was a medic and nothing, nothing crazy, <laughs> at least <laughs> in front of my eyes. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Dog days, thanks for coming up here and, and sharing with us. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I was, I was okay. Um, we have another hand up. I'll go ahead and get to you in just a second, Elections. Um, and Indigo, did, did you get a chance to jump in? Are you, um, were you able to hear Ollie? Heidi, always. Indigo? Okay, um, Heidi, have you heard much about the, the hag phenomena? Uh, I imagine it must come up, uh, since you, people come to you so much with, uh, the hat man phenomena. I know that it's been brought up more recently as, like, kind of like the shadow of, the lady in white, maybe. Um, and I think even David Grush may have mentioned the hag at one point. Uh, yeah, I have. Um, he, uh, she, <laughs> is seen right alongside of Hatman oftentimes and being directed by him. Uh, there's the old hag and then there's that younger hag uh, phenomena. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Um, just I, I have down. to ask, the younger hag different from Bledsoe's Lady in White? I thought you were going to ask if she was single. I mean, it, that, that, would have, that was going to be next. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a complicated world out there, but I, I want to be able to know whether, they're, whether I'm being hagfished or not. You know what I mean? Are, the, are these the same, same people? Uh, no. 
no. Um, I it, the lady, I I've spoken to him, and uh, he didn't seem to conclude that it was Mary or anything. Just that it was a lady uh, when I spoke to him. I haven't I haven't read his book or anything, but um, uh, the hag, uh, the younger one, is is does uh, horrific stuff. I mean, pretty much um, raping, attacking, biting, scratching. Uh, pinning people down type of phenomena. So uh, it's just, just horrible, just horrible stuff happening with that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, and it's on the same side of the dark source, uh, you know, shadow people, hat man, uh, negative alien beings. That's why I kind of lumped them all into one side of the fence because they're related, they're connected. They all have a similar agenda. So it's like to say they put on a pair of jeans one day versus another. It doesn't even matter. Uh, they're all working for the same goal. Um, so it's like they'll use technology. They'll use uh, <laughs> drugs, alcohol, whatever it takes to get you to believe what they're trying to sell. And it's dark and destructive. So it's like uh, put, a, put any title you want to it. It doesn't matter. And uh, Fringe, I know it might not be time yet. I just want to remind us to, to bring Larry up. Um, I don't. I don't want to forget. I don't know when we're when we're doing that. Yeah. Well, Larry is ref Larry's being stubborn. He's not requested to speak, even though I know he very much wants to hear about. I think <laughs> Heidi has had multiple experiences with Jesus. So I know Larry is very tempted, but he is withholding. He does not want to see the memes that will come out tomorrow with well, him speaking I, in the gamer space. I tell you what, friends, we can do better. And I, I know you like to troll and you can go overboard sometimes, but I'm going to join you just this once. I think everybody who Larry is following or who's following Larry, send a bunch of, pick a favorite emoji, pick a nice and friendly one and send a bunch of hearts over to Larry um, and just over, see if you can get his phone to overheat, you know what I mean? So it becomes like a security issue and he just has to come up. Um, I think that's a, that's a nice gentle way to do this. Um, Heidi, while we're waiting for Larry and, and we are, I see the hands, we will absolutely be getting to the questions. Um, it's, it, it's so sad these days and again I don't know where I was I, I just came to UFO Twitter a, a year ago or so but I was just shocked to see um, and to understand that people are allergic to the negative side of the phenomenon they don't want to hear about it they don't want to talk about it they'll kick you out of a space they'll unfollow you they'll block you um, you know you're a fear monger we only if you only concentrate on the light and raise your vibration all of this will go away you know, it's just all a bunch of nonsense and people are just, they don't want to understand that things like demons are actually real and they are involved in the UFO phenomenon. You know, they look at people like me and probably you and think we're just so stupid and so archaic and we're just lost in religion and, you know, those people way back then, they had no idea what was actually going on and um, it's, it's frightening and sad because I will tell you right now, the so-called insiders know exactly what this is. Um, they all know exactly what this is. And um, you've got guys, we spoke about this in the space earlier today, you've got guys like Hal Putoff still in, the, in his, what, he's in his 80s or something, uh, still pursuing this topic with his entire being because of these afterlife implications that we oh. spoke about, Heidi. Um, they, they know, and they are afraid of dying because they know exactly what's happening at the end. And this is nothing against put off personally at all or where he's going at all. I have no idea. I'm saying that the afterlife and, uh, you know, this, this demonic side and the spiritual side is something that ufology just laughs at. And, um, these insiders know exactly what's up and it's sad because they won't give it up. You know, they won't, they won't tell us the truth. Um, elections, welcome to the space. I think you're next. Do you have a question for Heidi? Yeah, thanks. Thanks a bunch. Um, I'm, I'm not really big up to speed on this issue. I mean, I, uh, I have some general understanding about it. Um, I really want to applaud your comments, friends, just now, in that there is a dark 
aspect to this, and we have to take it seriously. Um, on that note, I would ask Heidi, in her best estimate, and uh, pardon me, I mean, I'm a little late to the party if this has already been covered, but if she could make some general observations about what she finds the genesis of this phenomenon to be, interdimensional, I, that would be my guess of some sort. Um, I, I don't know what, what Heidi's point of view is. Um, I, I, again, I, anything she wants to riff on, I would say that the idea of, of demonic, um, yeah, that might be a, a proper term. I think that there's, it's so loaded from the standpoint that, I mean, this is probably coming from outside of the direct terrestrial realm into it, I would guess. And as a result, I'm not sure it's necessarily baked into the terrestrial um, pie, for best, better way, lack of a better way to say it. So I don't think that the whole you know, catechism that comes out of the Bible on the demonic side may apply. Maybe it does. I'm not, I'm not rejecting the Bible as being an important source of, of understanding. But anyway, um, again, I, I like all the hosts a lot, um, and this is seems like a very rational and serious space, and that's what I like. But generally, speaking, yeah, it's um, welcome to the Doom Room. Like we're all different here. Friends is Christian. I'm spiritual, not religious. Stoned is everything. No, I think she's also spiritual, not religious. But we're we're diverse. But we we always doom dark. We doom deep. We doom hard. And this is the space where. That, that normally where you can't share stuff because you're worried that the listener might be traumatized. This is the one place where you don't worry about protecting the listener. And we even accept uh, the love and light people, the positive people. Um, that's, that's the most radical thing you can do in here. Just bring a bunch of unicorns and rainbows. We'll still accept you. So um, it's, well, it's, it's all there. part of the same thing. And I'm, we're trying to understand what that greater thing is. And again, there is a, um, a, a dark aspect to this NHI ET reality. I'm not quantifying in any way. I don't think we can quantify much because the government didn't tell us squat. The experiencers tell, experiencers tell us a lot. And obviously Heidi is, is an experiencer. So anyway, I'll shut up. But I, I really was just curious. I, I think that, that to me it looks like it's some sort of interdimensional bleed. And my, I guess the other thing that goes along with this is why do they really want to be here and fuck around with us? I mean, it, it seems like, uh, you know, are we just a toy? Anyway, I'm happy to hear any riffing on what I, I laid out there. Thank y'all. I sincerely believe the reason why they fuck around is the same way, reason anybody does. And it's simply to find out, to see what we'll do, to see what they can get away with or, you know, lure us and... It's, there's a lot of manipulation going on, um, and regarding Doom, the most beneficial thing I've done in my life is my own shadow work, and sometimes you have to face reality so you can find your solutions, you can go above it, and uh, these conversations are important, especially when we're all doomed, and I, I keep forgetting, I keep trying to placate the, the topic to make it like more palatable when I'm discussing it, but in, I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that something was happening, that I need to be, you know, making a scene it out um, and spending all my time in these Why do you say we're all doomed? The answer. Why are we all doomed? Well, oh, uh, here we go. Elections, where have you been? Hey, I know we're in the saddle of change and things are crazy and potentially really bad. Don't get me wrong. But I don't. we don't know the outcome of this yet. I think, you know... It's up to us to try to push it I feel like in a reasonable direction. All right. No, no, I think that we're in uh, the process of a cyclical change. And I feel like um, on the spiritual side, the more like um, woo side of it, people are being informed of that in various ways, including apocalyptic visions, downloads. Um, the, uh, I'm hearing Which I respect the fact that that's going on, and I think it is. Yeah, that's 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 what I meant when I was saying we're all doomed. Is that we are like in the the throes of a the beginning of a cataclysmic event here, um, and that's why we're all getting kind of like um, the alarm bells going. 
I, it's I, I'm waiting for the big California earthquake, and once that happens, I feel like that's officially the kickoff. So, the, the, our take on doom is not fatalistic, at least not across the board, right? So, fringe Tiff and I we differ somewhat on our on our relationship. I think to to doom and risk, but the whole reason we we call it the doom room is to benevolently trigger people. Um, and make sure that people who don't want to face any darkness don't come into the doom room and to give it a modern, um, uh, not modern, a more a actionable take, right? Like we're, we're not, we're not going to talk about the pole shift and not tell you how to protect your families, right? So we're, we're not doomed in the fatalistic or, or, you know, deterministic sense. Um, but we are apps. I personally, I'm a shamanic doomer, right? I'm more like go into the darkness so you come out on the other end. I think I think Tiff is more like, oh, you know, if you if you have like ostrich syndrome, it's not gonna make you any safer. But you, you do exactly want to face it. We've gotta be like we can't we can't uh, just be blindsided. Everybody's going to be blindsided, right? And they're gonna act like we didn't sit here and have all these spaces and talk about it and say like cheap, easy little ways to just prepare yourself better, get a first aid kit, uh, you know, a radio, um, some batteries, you know, things like that just to be like don't be the dummy with nothing because it sounded like it was bonkers. You know, be prepared for the first 72 hours of, you know, say a Carrington event happens because during this process, our magnetic field's reducing and uh, we're at greater risk to things during the solar maximum, which is going now through like the summer of like, what, I don't know, maybe it's the summer of 2025 or winter um, of 2025, the end of the beginning of the year. Um, so we've got that to worry about for the next year uh, while this process is happening. And then there'll be a big earthquake, but that'll set off like there's a lot of electricity and magma underneath our, our crust right now. And it can go on and on. So it's, there's a lot of catastrophe that could happen in the next couple of years um, because of the precarious situation that we're in uh, with the planet. And we as a humanity are going to be like we saw with COVID all this morning together. We were all suffering in some way or, we were all like uh, kept away from each other. That's kind of like that's small, small potatoes. And are we like able to cook, like grow food or prepare food? Um, like, what can we do to keep ourselves safe in a stone age or a you know back to the eighteen hundred style world? And um, maybe it won't happen for fifty years, but I don't think that's true. Um, I, I appreciate saying. those comments. Everybody needs to be prepared for, I mean, there are tons and tons of things that are out there that could put us all down to our knees. It's not just one thing. I mean, could it be from a physical, you know, catastrophe? Yeah. I mean, history is full of those things. I'm working on the Cosmic Summit, and, you know, catastrophism is a core element of that. I, I think... Personally, what I try to think about, I'm a policy analyst, a right, and politics, media, blah, blah, blah. But what I'm focused on is, okay, yeah, we can all prepare, but what are we going to do to change the meta that's, that's, you know, causing us to be kind of like at the whims of whatever's coming down the pike? I think the human condition has to empower itself in some fundamental way, and I think that means coming together in some fundamental way and now we're completely fractured for reasons you know you know the political side is what i focus on because if we don't change our elections we can't put new people in power and we're going to have we're going to have collapse okay i agree on that i'm looking down the barrel of you sound like a doom no well in a way yeah, no, i look down the barrel of the gun when i look at the realities that we're all facing i don't think however that they're not surmountable I do think we're smallable. We're, we're completely aligned well, in that well, that's, sense. Yeah, that's I think good. I, I think our chances are slim, but, but I we agree. have to have like we have to have quantifiable methodologies to move us in a different direction. I mean, what we I do. say a lot of yeah. times is very simple. When I look at the where we are right now, the path we're on is unsustainable, and it it absolutely is going to guarantee failure. So, what do we do to push this system in a different direction that actually gives us some positive options and i do think that you know outside of nuclear war and that's you know a, a very real possibility but it has been for a long time yeah. um all the other things that are out there 
I think that we can probably figure out a way to to manage our world and have a sustainable methodology to get through this saddle of change that we're in. And there might be some things coming down the pike that really will change the whole paradigm and thinking and abilities and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I mean, I, I know some things that may be, but nobody knows. But I, I guess my whole point here is I do want to hear Heidi's take on what these entities are, what she thinks they really are and their elemental reality and why they have an interest in, in the humans and what we can do to protect ourselves. And I do think having a strong spirit and, you know, being able to stand up to the fear that's thrown out is an important um, defense. But anyway, I'll shut up. Thank you all very much. Oh, thanks for the question. Uh, what these things are, uh, they come from a dark source. Um, I was told literally like a, there's a, there's a dark crystal that's associated with this dark source and, uh, it's more positive beings, including ourselves come from uh, a light source. And I, I'm assuming maybe the source that I, I mentioned earlier, um, I don't know what uh, if there's a special name for what they are coming from, except for that's a, a dark source. Um, they are uh, like like a a, a, a a darkening of the universe, I guess you could say, that is creeping planet to planet. This is not the first planet this has happened to. We're just next in line, and as they infiltrated and influenced and crept into people's homes, into their lives, into their souls, and sent already corrupted, possessed, aka possessed aliens, um, uh, they, they uh, worked their way through here to um, contribute to the conquering of this planet. And, and I was told, you know, imagine I'm sitting, I'm a college kid, and I'm like being told your book will be the one to wake people up to the threat that's here. I'm like, give me a break. I don't even like writing. I'm, you know, I got a lot, of, lot to do, a lot to think of. And, and to take it on and to see it grow to the level that they told me that it would spread to such an extent and that's when I would know the next steps would, would happen. And now it's not like I have all the answers, but, um, it was made clear to me just a few years ago what that next step is. And uh, that's what I was hinting to fringe that I, I hope to speak to sooner than later. Um, because it, it's, it's something I would have never really anticipated though. I really should have, cause I was told, um, I was, uh, but I mean, it's just a lot. It's, it's a really, um, big conversation to have and, uh, not, something I take lightly and I, I really took my time to understand it um, and uh, so I so this threat that's coming it's been coming for a long time it's been scratching at our surface you know doing three knocks here three knocks there uh, to mock God the Trinity you know and uh, I, I get it um, you know, people have different beliefs and whatnot I'm I'm not a uh, person that attends a church. I'm not religious in that sense. I'm Christian because I know who I saw. I know who has spoken to me. I know who's directed me. It was Jesus Christ. And I am 100% on board because I know what's real. Um, and I don't question my eyeballs and my heart and my soul when I've seen him speak to it and save me over and over again um, and to send workers that taught me about him that didn't look like you and I and I know that I've gone back and forth to a crystal city that looks like <clears throat> ancient Greek buildings I, I know that um, I was taught things there I know where I came from I know why I'm here uh, I've been talking about these things for a couple of decades plus now and uh i've never been shy i use my real name 
I put myself out there to serve as an example of what all this is. So, uh, I could try to, you could reach out and send me a message and I'll respond, you know. If you cut me, I'll bleed. I'm, I'm here, you know, I'm here for this. And I'm all in. And uh, I knew that when I agreed to be here and remembering it, that my life was not my own. I didn't come here to settle down, get married, have children. Uh, I, I put so much into trying to just, you know, peel back the layers and say, well, here you go. What more can I do for you? And that's 99% of my day asking God, what more can I do today that will lead people to the truth of what's going on? Little did I know I would get hardcore evidence of that. And uh, I hope to share that soon when things are safest and best timing. And uh, as people all raise their hand to having seen these horrific entities, I was tasked with warning people about um, all can identify what I'm speaking of. This is pretty much the time uh, to take it to the next level. And I, I hope uh, I hope that I can call on you guys for support during it because uh, you won't you won't miss it. To put it lightly, <laughs> thank you, lady. Forgive me if I'm if I'm misunderstanding. Uh, and uh, so, sorry, I'll I'll give you a chance to respond as well, Pix. This, are you saying there's there's a message that that you have to deliver that is that dooms a bit deeper, but you you want a safer timing? I, I just want to make sure I'm not missing something. Uh you know, I don't even know if it's going to be safe either way, to be honest. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty intense and it involves everybody at the top of these, these discussions when it comes to, uh, UFO disclosure. So, uh, I, I mean, and I'm, I'm just <laughs> merely trying to understand just what the implication is because I, you know, I, I have, I have the most positive association with the marketing phrase of doom because I, I wake up and I actually have my default assumption is, is the darkest possible reality. So these everybody, not everybody, but most people in this space have already heard the, the worst possible version of something, right? Immortal slavery that you can't possibly break out, out of a recycling soul and the possibility that if we fuck it up this cycle, it'll be fucked up forever. So there's, you know, and if there's a darker version of Doom, please let me know, and I can I can order new Doom or diapers. But there's no. This is the one space where you don't need to worry about protecting the listener, right? The people know they have a right to leave this room. I just want to be very clear about that. Oh, no, it's not about uh, causing fear onto other people, and this is not something full of Doom. In fact, it's full of hope, and uh, it, it's just something bigger than myself that. Um, and to be respectful of people's understandings too, not just this room, but other people and what the reality that we live in and to have evidence of it. Um, it will take things to a different level of big hope, not doom. That's, that's extraordinary. Um, I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but if there is a message of hope you have, I would, I would love to hear it. And, and it's perfect. You have every right to say no. I just want to be honest with you. A lot of us have been waiting a really long time. Um, a lot of us are, are, have, have spent way more time on this planet in their incarnation than I have. And I know patience is running thin even among very patient people. So if you have a message of hope and, and you're willing to share it, like I would be grateful. Um, it's... Uh, it's, it's something that, it's something that really can't be put out lightly right now. Um, is that, I, is uh, that but, okay if it's, if it's not light? Is, is there something wrong if it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's and, uh, Heidi, you can say no. I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm no. literally just trying to, to, to understand because... <laughs> I appreciate the question. I really do. And it, and it gives me pause to, to think on things too, for my, uh, you don't have to answer now. Right. I just, Oh uh, yeah. You yeah. Know. 
no, I appreciate it. It's, it's pacing myself and, and, um, I took time to understand some things and I, and I took time, um, to gather research and, and I got it now. Uh, last I mentioned it to Fringe, I said I was waiting on something. Well, I got it now. And, uh, now I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted, blown away and, and, uh, you know, trying to get the quiver out of my own voice with it to say the, to be honest with it, um, with it all. So it, it's, it's a huge conversation. It's something that, um, it, it will change a lot of things. And, uh, as big as the conversation of shadow people and hat man has gone, I think it might go bigger than that. Um, I would, I would hope so. I tell you what, take your time. Don't yeah. give me an answer now. Mm -hmm. But the whole purport of what Fringe, Tiff, and I do, whether it happens tonight or it doesn't happen in our, in our space, we've made mistakes on this issue. We've, we've, we've sort of socially, slightly, all, all of us, censored people. And, and other times I wanted to go deeper and maybe somebody else wanted, or I was like, no, let's not go there. And then Tiff is like, definitely we need to know about which reptilians are the hottest. Like, we don't want a space where there really isn't space to go someplace where everybody wants to go. And we, we don't, we don't want to like, Oh, should I go there? We don't want that to be the limiting thing in terms of the culture that we're, we're creating. We also don't want a space where, you know, it's me or somebody else like bullying you to share something you don't want to share. But I'm just letting you know, the very point of the space is to step where most people don't want to step and you have the freedom and you have the license and we're going to support you in it. Right. I'm just saying this is, the space in my mind to do it and it's absolutely a space to do it and that doesn't mean you're expected to do it I no I, 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 really, about that. I really do and it, like, um it, it it's it's uh i appreciate hearing that and and all and it's just really um i think there's a time for things uh to be best lined up and i'm i'm, I'm waiting to feel that it it is ready and uh i don't feel pressured i'm more anxious than anybody um to discuss it, it it's just uh right now that the time is not ex it, the best time um yeah but it's and soon, the, it's soon. And, and if you change your mind like in three seconds just change your mind and say oh Rick, i changed my fucking mind now is the time and it's for me and I don't want to wait for somebody to tell, to tell me. I'm just saying hypothetically, right? Um, and I, I promised I'd, I'd let Pix have a, a response, and then we're going to go to Mr. Thing. Uh, P Pix, go ahead, man. Thanks, man. Um, real quickly on the whole um, aborting of whatever is aborting. Um, you know, there are definitely tons and tons of things going on. We all know that. Um, I think that there are a lot of potentially positive things in addition to, obviously, some negative things. And I think that's the nature of reality. And um, we're just going to have to deal with it accordingly. Um, I'm glad that Heidi has a positive message at the end of this. By the way, Heidi, Chris is a friend of mine. And I think that that's a hell of a story, too, about there is you know, that we have friends. We're not alone. It's not. We're not at the mercy of necessarily just the negative stuff, um, and we have our own spirits. And our ultimate, I think, the human spirit is a strong and positive and quite compassionate thing. When you get right down to it, that's who, who matters who we are. I, I would ask Heidi real quickly. Um, you know, I, I, I heard your answer about you know coming from a dark crystal. That was a little bit unsatisfying to me, I'll be honest with you. Um, I was curious if you could give me a little bit more understanding about where you think this hat man, hat woman, this negative force that you've had a, a reaction with, an interaction with, really comes from. I mean, is it, do, do, can you say if you can't, that's fine, if, you don't, if you're not sure. But I mean, where, what's, what do you think it's about? I mean, other than messing with us. Thanks. Well, that was, uh, sure. That was the answer from, uh, the alien being calf about the dark crystal and, uh, talked about a dark source that they come from, uh, uh, positive coming from this light source and this dark source being 
where they get their energy from. And there being a dark crystal that has been, quote, captured. I don't know what that means. Um, but they are a dark force. And it's like, why would they come here? Well, why did, why did Christopher Columbus uh, search and conquer? I mean, they have a lot in common with us where they want to conquer and take the land and just because they want to. They want it. Is dark and, uh, malevolent in your definition? I mean, can you be a little bit more specific what dark means to you? Oh, it is. Uh, this darkness is absolutely malevolent. It's, it, they're not our friends. They are looking to take over, dominate, possess, control, limit, conquer, move on to the next planet. We just happen to be the next one in line. This is not personal, but it is. Um, and there is, and this sounds cheesy, but there's a group of beings out there who are positive, who are battling the battle, uh, like Star Wars, you know, the, may the force be with you, you know, like trying to control the darkness, trying to limit it. Well, how do you do that? Well, this isn't, this is, this battle going on this planet, what they told me, this is not their personal battle. We should defend our own planet. And they're trying to influence that from the inside out, the more positive beings and negative beings just try to influence from the outside in, but they can have their own kind be born here too and try to move things in their own direction as well. So this influence to push towards making this planet more suitable to their liking to possess and control it and uh, it's just move on to the next one. I mean, this, is a darkness that's evil. It's not positive. Darkness is a connected to to evil for a reason. Why would why would uh, why would grays? You know the fuzzy loving grays that uh, people are uh, wanting to say that they're being misinterpreted for being dark. Uh, why would they try to disguise themselves as something we're we're calling demonic? Why would they do that? They like to. I, I wouldn't parade around as something demonic, you know. But they are. And they're doing demonic things, whether they're wearing the face of shadow people or not. They're doing the same stuff. Paralyze you, take you, beat you up, rape you. I mean, it's the same M.O. It's the same thing. So it's it, we're dealing with a, with a, a, a spiritual battle. Um, and I think we've had ancient text warning of a, uh, this thing coming to a head at, at different times. I mean, we have ruins that are ancient ruins that, well, what could have destroyed that? How did they forget how they made those pyramids? You know, it looks like we've had battles going on here for a while that wiped our memories, you know, um, burned down the library. Nobody forgets. Nobody remembers what was in those libraries. It, it just makes no sense. I mean, the, it, it, giant. I remember being a kid watching on television, uh, giant bones being found, a Viking 10 feet tall. And my sister and I going, wow, that's cool. Well, where the heck is it now? Well, what bones? Come on now. They're full of crap, and it, and it's it's old. They're hiding things, and uh, a lot of the people that are at the top of this UFO uh, conversation, I, I mean, <laughs> it's it's really it's. I know a lot of them, um, a lot of hard workers in there, but then there's some people that have been guided. Let's put it that way. And um, I, I don't understand it. It's like, are you whose side are you on? Mankind's side or the other side? And what's the other side? Huh? Let's see the profiting, um, the darkness. It's like, dude, we, we gotta, we gotta recognize that not everybody's on our side because they want to have a shiny car in this little brief lifetime versus an eternity. Uh, it, it's crazy to me. I've seen the other side. It's awesome. If you don't break through because these dark things are blocking your tunnel to get back home, you've got a problem. You're limited here, suffering, leaving EVPs on recording saying, help me. You know, he's coming. You don't want to be that. We've got to shake loose from the grip of this dark crap. Uh, I think it's clear what darkness is. It's evil. It's starting to look like Gog and Magog here as well. It's like uh, for us to forget um, the reason why the Bible was so important for us to learn. Uh, it's a historical reference, and it doesn't have to be the Bible. It could be the Quran or the Talmud or uh, any of the the doctrine. I mean, there's a history in those books, and uh, we're looking at it happening again right now, honestly. 
Um, yeah, I hope I hope that's a satisfactory response for you, uh, Pix. And just a, a little bit of housekeeping, Darius. I saw you're you're up here, speaker. If you do want to speak, please keep your your hand up. Um, I'm glad, by the way, Heidi. I can send you emojis right now. Everybody in this room who knows about the um, the trolling relationship that Larry and I have, Larry and I do have a war, a war of love and light. So I go into his spaces, and he has this piano music playing, and he he lies about the space titles. He calls them perfume and essential oils, but it's really about UFOs. And I go into his space, and I try to pull people into the doom room, and then he comes into the doom here, and he speaks with our darkest dooming people like Tom Montauk and Amy, the abductee, and tries to lure them into the love and light. So everybody right now, click on Larry's profile, tag him, and say, why aren't you coming up as speaker? Because we planned this whole thing around you. If the love and light is so strong, you have nothing to be afraid of. Uh, just do that lovingly, if you don't mind right now. <laughs> Larry, it's, I'm happy. You know, Larry is in here so often. And uh, Mr. Thing. We are getting to you right now. You've been extraordinarily patient, a little bit, you know, trigger happy with the with the emojis and thumbs downing, but I can handle it. Uh, the the floor is yours, my man. And um, Larry, you should know there's something called optimistic nihilism. That is an option. Oh, he's going to be up here. He's going to talk to us. Don't worry about it, Tiff. Go ahead, uh, Mister Thing. Uh, for, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Second of all. I love what you said about optimistic nihilism because I don't even know if I'm that. However, like I uh, I raised my hand. Oh my god! Uh, I raised my hand first of all because <laughs> oh, do you guys heard that? Anyways, uh, that was Bender. Uh, anyways. Um, I raised my hand because um, I was very intrigued by, I, I, I don't recall who brought up the conversation about the other dimension. I do believe in that, but I, uh, oh, I think it, it was Heidi. And, I, but, oh, I, I recalled Heidi. Heidi, thank you for the light you just injected into our lives. I don't know if anybody believes that, but. I believe I did receive that light, by the way. Um, uh, then, uh, but, however, I think the other, what I believe is um, a parallel di dimension. I don't think they're all evil. I don't think they're demons. I think they're just beings just as we are beings. That's how I believe. That's my own personal theory. I think they're just beings. They could, they could be bad, they could be good. That's my belief. They could be bad, they could be good. Uh, they can be neutral. Uh, and I think it's unfair to call them all evil or demonic or... It's like... Um, what, what's that show? Um, the Upside Down. Uh, Stranger, and, Stranger Things. And that show. Mm, Stranger, yep, Stranger Things. Uh, I believe in, in such a parallel universe. I do. Spiritually, I, I believe that does exist. I don't believe in aliens, personally. I don't believe they're like space beings. I believe they're here, or they're around them, and they're just in a different dimension, but I, I believe they're here, because humans have been looking, and they have been looking. We didn't find anything in space. However, there has been, uh, people call it like, pseudoscience or fringe science uh, but I believe in it I witnessed it I felt it uh, and I call it uh, like I felt synchronicity I don't know if you guys felt this energy but I did feel like major synchronicity and it was 
when I first felt it, it was scary. It was creepy. However, I do, uh, all right, I'll shut up. Oh my God, there's so many. All right, I'll shut up. By the way, love you. You're, you're love okay, you. Mr. Mr. Thing. I love you, Heidi. I love you. You, Ice and Fire, uh, D, D <laughs> Alien. I love you so much. You have no idea. But I love Heidi, though. She, uh, her brain is blowing my brain. <laughs> oh, that's really kind of you. I appreciate it. I'm and, done. And I would never. Oh, I appreciate it so much. I, and and I don't think all the aliens are, are evil. Um, there's definitely a conflict in alien contact. That's the, oh, that's the I, I don't believe in aliens. I, I, I actually believe uh, the, the, the other beings were here before we were intelligent enough to perceive them. That's my belief. I think they were well, here before us. So we are the aliens to them. Well, yeah, there's yeah, there's different names for uh, like the being that I I saw. He told me he was called. They were called different things in the past. Angelic, even. So um, I think that just just different uh, different titles given for if you could cover your eyes and feel them out and just go with that sense of what you feel in front of you. I think that's. Uh, uh, best to do instead of always, uh, you know, having a name or a title. So, interdimensional, whatever people want to call it, some things just exist without a title. So, um, but yeah. But, but, but Heidi, if, if you actually look at what science, like actual physical science, has discovered, you would see that it did, it does know that their dimension exists. And I want to say a, a controversial theory, if if you guys would allow me, Frank. Absolutely you? not. What do you think this room is? No, this is the place Ooh. to do it. All right. Go, go ahead. So I, I do have a theory, my own personal theory. So I think uh, when it comes to, if you want to talk about UFOs and stuff like that, if you want to look at concrete history... You would know it only happened after humans did a, a, a mess up and they really destroyed other, uh, like they destroyed nature. If you, you want to, uh, well, I'm talking about Hiroshima. Just, just say it. This is the doom room, Mr. Thing. Yeah, take away all the PG ratings and just say say what's on your all mind. Right, say so, it's, it's okay. so humans did that, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You know what I'm talking about? No, no. <laughs> they the nuclear do? bombs. They bombed Earth with really bad chemicals. Okay, you were using all of those... I thought you were talking about something sexual. You uh -huh. were using all those crazy syllables to hide the fact for nukes? Yeah. Have, have, have you seen what happened to Mars? Do you know what happened to Mars? Well, well, Humans did not do sure that. for that, but fuck Mars. I don't care about Mars at this point. You don't know what Mars. You don't. Where know they what could Mars be, used to there could be life on Mars. Rainforest. I don't live on Mars. I mean, but I'm saying we might have had a second Earth. You know what well, I mean? Well, you well, can, oh no, no, no! Fine for you. When you say we might have, that's not fair. Well, it's not fair because it's nuked. It, well, so obviously they nuked it's not Earth fair. as well, though. But Earth lived. Okay. And they okay. blame it on but, but, other stuff. Well, I'm not going to go there. That's really politically... Okay, so let, let's go back to... Let, let's bring it back down to Earth. All right, can I go so back to my theory? Little, there's some new, yeah, you're saying there's some nuki nuki action here yeah. happening so, on Earth? So, big hold on, hold on. Look, look back in history. When did the UFO sightings... I'm sorry, I'm going to go deep into this. The UFO sightings only happened... If you, go, if you go back and look into the history, I think it was like 1946 or something like that when they did the deed. Only after that, the other creatures, which, in my belief, they live on our land, but in a different dimension. They were like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And then Roswell happened. And they're like, 
Alright, take this engine, test it, reverse engineering it, near it, and do your thing. And uh, that's my theory. I know it's it might be dumb to No, it's not the craziest thing, Mr. But Thing. That's my maybe theory. that's why you're called Mr. Thing. And I, I respect the boldness for for coming and, and positing a new, a new theory, you know? Um, I could say something crazy and that maybe an NHI gave us the nukes so that we could manage the, the upcoming war, but I would never say such a thing out loud. But Mr. Thing, I'm glad you, you I thought I was worried you were, and I'm going to be, be a troll. I was gravely mistaken. I hope you come back into the Doom Room and um, thank, thank you so much for, for coming up to speak, man. You know, and check out Mars because they nuked the whole thing, the whole thing. Um, I would love we to have see what you speak were you speaking about? But I don't believe it. But that's, that's I'll fine. I'll be a new, um, I'm not uh, saying I don't believe yeah. it, like, factually, but... You shouldn't, you shouldn't believe anything that you don't fully understand or have the, the facts for yourself. That's what we believe in here, uh, in discernment, right? We, we're, we're anti-trust me, bro. We're, we're go ahead and verify it for yourself and then make up your own mind. But, that's, but I, you know, know Mars is bigger though. than Earth, though. Well, yeah, so it takes way more nukes to nuke all of Mars. They, I don't believe nuke they nuked, well, I, 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 I might believe that they nuked some of it. I don't believe they nuked all of what it. What if they nuked all of it? Wouldn't that be crazy, though? Well, if, I, I, if, well if it was the Pharaoh... Be crazy. I would believe yeah, it. Right, but if you... Not us, but if you found not out this civilization. This, right. That's, that's an interesting angle, isn't it? What if we're not the most nuclear civilization? What if our neighboring planet... Oh, wait, wait, uh, we like are. Nuts, well, no, I, I don't believe I, there was any other nuclear... Wait a sec. I thought you're Mr. Evidence-Based. I thought you're saying I am going to make no, my mind after seen, I see the I've evidence. I've seen the evidence based on the pharaohs. They, uh, obviously, uh, they might have microwaves. They might have, like, other things. They, 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 I, I believe, like, humans were never that low to be as low as this current civilization. This civilization right, is... Right, I tell you what. Well, Mr. Thing, I've, I've got right, hands. I'll, I'll, I'll send right. you the data, and you can hold on to your beliefs, or you can look at the data. But either way, nobody's going to ask you to change your beliefs. You're, you're welcome here. No, I, I, would love love to I would love to change my beliefs, but it, it should be based on data. Yeah, I mean, that's why Mars is completely nuked based on isotope Z129. Uh, uh, I agree that but it I need does to get look hands. nuked, but I don't think it's us. It could have been uh, another, yeah, uh, like a previous civilization, but I don't think previous civilizations uh, got this far. Uh, well, uh, shut I'm up. Saying. Oh my yeah. God, I'm talking too much. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay, Mr. Thing. It's a, it's a big deal when, when you find out, like, holy crap, a whole other planet was nuked by something that wasn't humans. But that's exactly no, what I'm saying. No, I get it. Um, I, I, like, I've seen the pictures. I know that there was, yeah. like, major explosions, but it's, uh, it, it can also be attested to, like, uh, huge-ass meteors as well. Nope, that's not that's not how the radioactive isotope works. But I've got to move on to hands. I'll send you the data, and you can bring it back later. All right, or you can comment on the posts.